Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I have a nice kinematics problem for you. We have a block of two kilograms that is going to slide down this frictionless wedge. It's eventually going to hit the end and keep going, right? And it's gonna launch off the table and it's going to travel a certain distance that I've written as capital R. I have five questions to ask you concerning this problem. Uh, the first one, what is the acceleration of the block on the ramp? Uh, number two, how do I find the velocity as it just leaves the ramp, right? What's the velocity of the block? Um, how far will it hit the floor? What is this value R for this particular block? That's my third question. My fourth one is how much time does it take to do this whole thing, right? The time to slide down the ramp plus the time to fly off the ramp and hit the floor. And the last question I have for you to think about is, what if I had a bigger mass or a smaller mass? Does the mass of the block affect any of these results that I've looked at in the first four problems? All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja channel. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, first question, find the acceleration of the block on this ramp. A couple things to remember about this problem. We have a no friction. That's very important. That simplifies our calculation quite a bit. Uh, the other thing is this is not free fall, right? It's not free fall. Uh, therefore, it means that the acceleration you cannot write as just minus 9.81 meters per second square. That's what you would have if you simply have a block that was dropping. Okay, but we don't have that in this case. So you can't simply write it like this. Now, what we're going to do in order to find the acceleration, let's go on the next page and write this out. Um, so this is what we have, this picture. What is the acceleration? Uh, again, if you look at the force as well, we have only two forces acting on it. We have the weight acting this way, and you also have a normal force this way. Now, if you haven't done forces yet in your course, uh, let's not worry about it. I'll uh, simplify it in just a minute. All right, what I'm going to do now is I want to break this force down into components. And how do I choose a coordinate system? Well, for any object on a slope, it's best to use this type of coordinate system because this is what happens. We know the block is going to move like this down the ramp. So it's good to have a set of axes, at least one axis that goes along that direction. And that tells us how to break this down into components. So all we have to do now is break this down into components. So we're gonna have this component of the weight and we're also going to have a component that is parallel to the ramp like this. All right, now this guy, I'm just gonna go ahead and write it down, mg sine of theta, if my angle theta is the angle of the ramp. And this other guy, which I should have made in a different color, let me just switch it here. Uh, this guy here is going to be mg cosine of theta. So now you write down Newton's second law for the direction down the ramp. There's only one force. And Newton's second law says it has to be equal to ma, right? You add up all the forces, mg sine of theta down the ramp has to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now you notice we have the mass on both sides of the equation. And what we're left with is this expression over here. It's g sine of theta. Okay, now this is the component of gravity that is acting down the ramp. So even if you didn't do forces, I can redo a simple diagram like this just with acceleration. I'd have little g going down and I'd have g sine theta down the ramp and g cos of theta perpendicular to the ramp. Now, does this result make sense to you? Well, one thing you could do is, I didn't tell you what the angle was right here. So I can make that angle small. And what if the ramp was really, really small? What if that angled approach zero? Well, I know this acceleration should be really, really small if the angle is zero. Does that make sense from this result? Well, yeah, you'd simply substitute the values in, right? You'd get 9.8, and then you would multiply by sine of zero. Well, guess what? That's about zero. What if the ramp was really, really large? That means that this angle theta over here tends toward 90 degrees. What would be the acceleration in this case? Well, the acceleration would be 9.8 multiplied by sine of 90 degrees. That's approximately equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, we know the direction is down the ramp. So this here also makes sense. So now what happens if I go back to my original problem statement in that case, my real angle was 30 degrees. 
So what is the acceleration? Well, now you just substitute. A little g is 9.8, approximately, multiplied by sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 is 1 half. Uh, so the magnitude of this acceleration is going to be 9.8 multiplied by 1 half, which gives me 4.9 meters per second squared. That is the part A of my problem, okay? That's the magnitude of the acceleration, and we know it's down the ramp. All right, let's go to problem B now. All right, part B says find the velocity as it leaves the ramp. All right, as it leaves the ramp, it's going to be right at this position, and it's going to be traveling in the direction of that ramp. This is the velocity, right? So it's going to have some angle. Again, it's going to be launched at 30 degrees here. So let me go ahead and draw that uh, separately on a, another figure over here. So this is really the direction of the velocity. Now I can break that down into two components again, right? I can have a component of the velocity that is going to be in this direction. This is my X component. And I could also have a component of the velocity which is acting down now, right? I can break that down into two components. Let's call that VY. Now, where is the angle theta in this figure? Again, if you kind of play this game, you should be able to convince yourself that this here is the angle theta. All right, now let's first find what is the magnitude of this angle, right? The magnitude of, uh, not the magnitude of this velocity, right? That's the speed of the object. Since we know the acceleration here, and we also can figure out what is the distance, right? How far does the block travel? What is this distance D? Because you're given the height, the height here is 0 0.5 meters. Guess what? You can figure out what this distance is just using some trigonometry, right? Look what I have. If I write sine of the angle theta, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is H divided by the hypotenuse, which is D. So now I could just substitute the D and the sine theta. I get something like this. All right, now we can substitute our values. My h value is 0 0.5 and divided by sine of 30 degrees again. Sine of 30 actually is also 0 0.5. So this simply gives me one meter. So that makes that calculation pretty straightforward. Now, how do I calculate the speed? How fast is the block moving at this angle? For that, we will use one of the kinematic equations, okay? One of the kinematic equations looks like this. It's that the speed squared equals to the initial velocity squared or the initial speed squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the distance that I travel. Now, in this case, I'm going to assume that it just is released from rest. Okay, so I just release this block and that's it. I know the acceleration. I know the distance. I should be able to find what the magnitude of the velocity is or the speed of that block. Just take the square root here. I get two times A multiplied by D. All right, so now we just substitute in all our values. We get two. Uh, acceleration was 4.9. And now we also have one for the total distance. Guess what? My speed of the block is going to be, if I did everything correctly, I should get 3.13 meters per second. All right, that is the magnitude. I also know the direction, right? It's at 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal like this. Now, what you could do is you could find the values of these two components, right? All you have to do here is use some trigonometry, and that's what I'm gonna do here. So Vx and Vy, okay? Uh, Vx would simply be V cosine of the angle 30, and Vy, well, I'm just gonna call it a negative value since it's going down. I'm gonna call it V sine of the angle 30. Okay, um, now we substitute in our values. So for this, I'd get 3.13 cosine of 30. Put that in the calculator and I get roughly uh, 2.74 meters per second. Uh, for my Y component, this component acting down, I get a negative value because it's pointing down and I get a value of minus 1.565. Uh, meters per second. All right, so I know everything now about this velocity. I know its components. I know its direction. And I know the magnitude of that vector. Let's go to the next problem. Question C says, how far will it hit the floor? Basically asking for this, what is this R value over here? 
Again, we know quite a bit. We know, uh, we calculated the magnitude of this velocity, 3.13. I know both components. We want to know this distance r. That is an x distance, right? So we have to analyze this in the x direction, and in the we'll see we're also going to have to analyze it a little bit in the y direction. All right, so let's first look at the x direction. So this distance, I'm just going to call it delta x. Delta x is really what r is, right? This is what we want, this guy. Well, what is r? r is simply there is, once it leaves the ramp, there's no more acceleration in this x direction, right? The only thing we have is free fall once it leaves the ramp. So this is, this is really important. In this case here, this is only free fall everywhere where I'm going to highlight here as soon as it leaves the ramp free fall so now we simply use kinematics but the acceleration is no longer the 4.9 the acceleration is now 9.8 in this case so all we do now is apply our kinematics in both the x and the y direction so how are the equations looking like first in the x direction since there is no acceleration all we have is the velocity in the x direction multiplied by time. I know what the velocity in the x direction is. I calculated it over here. So I can take this step a little bit further. This would be 3.13 cosine of the angle of 30 degrees. That is the x component, All right? I calculated that, that was 2.74 multiplied by time. So the question now is what time do I substitute into this problem? The time that you substitute is the time that it takes to fall this distance, right? It starts right here at the tip of the ramp, and it's going to fall a certain height. In this case, it falls a height of 2 meters, which is here. Okay, so for that, we're going to write down an equation for the height of that mass. We can write this general equation first, then we'll substitute our values. Let me just write it down, then we'll explain it. Now, minus one half little g t squared. This tells me the height of the object, y, as measured from the ground as a function of time. We're going to substitute our values, right? Initially, I am at height h. I'm going to be two meters above the ground. What else? I now have this vertical velocity also, which is pointing downward. So this is v sine of theta, and I calculated that value multiplied by time and then minus one half little g t squared okay so this is my equation it tells me exactly where i am for every single time but i want to know well how much time does it take to get here what is the time well what do i know about this position right here i know that this position that the height is zero and i know i started initially at two meters so all we have to do now is do a little bit of algebra in order to rearrange this, okay? So in order to do this, let's substitute our values. Minus, uh, this guy over here was uh, 1.565t, okay? And then minus 1 half times 9.8, 9.8 multiplied by t squared. Now in order for me to solve, this is a quadratic equation. Let's write that down. You can use a calculator or you could simply solve. And I'll just do it out long in this case. Now, in order to simplify it, what I'm going to do is simply rewrite it, okay? I'm gonna rewrite it over here. So this, I'm gonna have zero on the left-hand side. I'm gonna have the first term with t squared. That'll be my first term. And in order to make it into a positive number, I'm gonna multiply through all the terms by minus one. So this first term ends up being 4.9 t squared. Now the next term ends up being positive 1.565 t. And then the last term is going to switch signs once I multiply by uh, minus one. Okay, so this is really the equation that I want to solve for time. In order to do this, what we're going to do is use the quadratic equation. And the quadratic equation, I'm just going to write it out over here. Remember, the solutions to this quadratic equation are minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and the whole thing divided by 2a. These are going to be my two solutions for the time. 
Okay, if I do that, this is what it looks like. Okay, so you have time, which equals to minus 1.565 plus or minus two solutions, square root of 1.565 squared. Now, for the next term, it's minus 4ac. Um, this is going to turn into a positive because this last term here is negative. So 4, 4.9 multiplied by 2. Now, the whole thing now gets divided by 2a. 2a is 2 times 4.9. You're going to get a positive solution and a negative solution. We only keep the positive solution because we're dealing with real time, okay? And if I do that, uh, the time that I get for this particular problem is 0 0.499 seconds. So a little bit under, just a shade under, uh, half a second in order to make this trajectory from the corner right here all the way to the floor. Now, all you have to do then is go back. I wanted to calculate how far it goes. That's in the x direction. So when I go back to my problem in the x direction, I was only missing the time. So now I just go substitute 3.13 cosine of 30. All of this gets multiplied by 0.499. All right, put that in the calculator. I should get something that's about 1.35 meters. Okay, that is the solution for this problem. Okay, part C, that's my distance R is 1.35 meters. All right, let's go to the next problem. Question D says, how much time does it take to hit the floor? All right, so again, we're going to split this problem up into two parts. This is part one, and this is part two. We just finished solving for this time for part two, right? Part two said it took 0 0.499 seconds in order to go from this point all the way to the floor. So we know this already. So what do we do about part one? Well, we already know a lot about part one. We know that the acceleration of the block was G sine of theta down the ramp. Okay. We also know the distance that it traveled. The distance was D, and that was 1 meter. We calculated that. So guess what? We can do some kinematics. Uh, we also know that it was released from rest, so that initial velocity down the ramp was 0 meters per second. So let's look at the first part. And all we have to do at the end is simply add both times together. All right, so for the first part, um, the distance that it travels, if it's accelerating here, uh, the distance that it travels down the ramp is equal to the initial velocity of that block times time plus one half the acceleration down the ramp multiplied by t squared. And again, we just finished saying that we've released that object from rest. So this guy was equal to zero. Uh, the acceleration we calculated earlier, that was 4.9. And what else? Um, the time is what we're looking for. We know it travels one meter. So all you have to do is simply solve this equation here. Bring the two on the outside or multiply by the D divided by that acceleration and take the square root. Again, you're only keeping that positive solution. So this here simply becomes uh, two multiplied by one divided by 4.9. That is the time for the first part. Okay. Uh, putting the calculator, putting everything in there, I think I got 0 0.639 seconds. All right, so now the total time for this entire trajectory is simply T1 plus T for the second part. So I get 0 0.639 plus 0 0.499. All right, All right man, my final solution uh, ends up being 1.14 seconds, just keeping uh, three significant figures. It's good enough for me. Uh, that's total time. All right, hopefully uh, that question makes sense to you. All right, my last problem now says, does the mass affect any of these results? So is the mass going to affect the acceleration over here? Well, that is no, right? We saw that from the beginning because uh, the force that's acting down is proportional to the mass. And therefore, when you write down Newton's second law, we saw that the mass cancels out and we had an acceleration which was simply 4.9 meters per second squared. Once it leaves the ramp, we know that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared and it's acting down. Here, it's acting along the ramp. Okay, so nowhere does that depend on the mass.
Everything else about this problem is kinematics. Once you know the acceleration, we're asking you for things like the speed, we're asking you for time, and none of those results are going to depend on the mass. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this problem. Hopefully you learned something and how to apply the equations. What we have to do for this problem is treat the part on the ramp separately from the part where it is in free fall, okay? Because the acceleration is different. So you can't use just one equation in order to solve this whole problem. Got to break it down into two sections. All right, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time.